Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. So I think we've got our application model in place. We've got our uh, set starting balance method which is now changing the uh, the stock market table model. It's changing the projection of the stock market table model. So that feels pretty good. Um, I think what we need to do now is move up another level to the application frame. So we'll need the application frame test and the application frame. And now we need to implement this code. So we need the starting balance field to call set starting balance on the uh, on the application model. And uh, just for fun, let's make sure this let's check to see if this is working. We've got all those other pieces coded up. They should work. Uh, but I want to see it. Because I get impatient. I like to see oops that's not going to work. Those aren't just spurious errors. Oh come on. Give me my there we go. Um, now, import. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> I, oh yeah, something about, um, I want to see the, the UI change. So this should change here when I press enter here, and it does, good. So we're, we're still on the right track. Um, so the question is, and this is a tricky one, how do we, how do we confirm that this field is wired up properly. Um, and you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. We, we can check to see that this starting balance method is being called by simply uh, making application model into an interface and having or, or you know passing in our using dependency injection to pass in the appropriate application model. That would be fine. And then what we'd be doing is basically using a mock object to check that this set starting balance was working properly. Um, that's okay, but how do I get this event to fire without exposing the field? I don't really want to expose the text field. Although, come to think of it, why not? I mean, why not expose the text field? Hmm. Um, so we've got this should lay out properly. We're doing all of this crazy stuff here. Speaking of train wrecks, there's this, this, these tests are nothing but a train wreck. Um, I, I really hate the tests in this class. <laughs> this stuff is okay, but all the layout related stuff, it's so, so bad. Um, so what? What to do next? Well, let's just try it. These tests are really bad, but I'm not too concerned about it. I mean, yes, it, it really annoys me how bad these tests are, but I don't, I know that as I will write more UI code, it's going to clean up immensely. I'm going to be spending a lot of time on the UI. Uh, I'm going to learn a lot from spending that time on the UI, and that those lessons are going to be applied here, or even if they're not, I'll figure out how to do it well, and then if this doesn't get fixed, it's just because I, I forgot about it or something like that. And next time I hit it, I'll have a pattern established in the application for dealing with it. So, yeah, this code is really bad. I don't know how to deal with it. I'm not going to beat my brain about it or, you know, kill myself over it because I have faith that over time I will learn a better way of doing it. And, and for me, that's a big part of not so much test-driven development, but incremental design. You're seeing a lot of incremental design now because we've got a, a fair amount of the application established. And for me, a big part of the app incremental design is first recognizing when you have a bad design that needs improvement. Um, second, and second, being okay with a design that's not perfect. So saying, yes, this isn't perfect, but I don't know how to make it better, and I'm just going to let it sit. And that, trusting that over time you will have those intellectual breakthroughs, those design breakthroughs, and things will get better. That's a huge part of incremental design for me, is trusting that things will get better. And I've done a lot of incremental design in my career, and it's always been true. The design will get better. Um, now, I'm thinking on projects that last months and years, so this little application isn't 
getting better as quickly as that. But keep in mind, we've only done about two days worth of coding so far. You know, there's lots of little 15-minute episodes, and we've been doing that for a couple of months. But the actual amount of full-time coding we have done is, is small. So in a real project, you just got to trust that if you don't see a way to make the design better today, uh, it will come along. If not from you, then from somebody else on the team. So uh, knowing when, I, I've said this before, you know, knowing when to really push on the design, as with the train wreck in, last, in the last episode, I was being lazy on that one, and that was no good, versus not having the answer and being willing to wait, uh, as we're seeing in this episode. I don't have the answer, so I'm just going to let it sit. Anyway, uh, get off my soapbox and get back to work now. Um, what we need to do is we need to say, we need to confirm that this action listener is firing. And the way I'm going to do that is by creating a mock application model and checking that the set starting balance method is being called. So, and for that, well, let me just, so, um, starting balance field should update application model. That's what we want to test. And what we want to assert at some point is, I don't know if it's equals or what, we're going to want to assert something about the uh, mock application model dot set starting balance called with the value of expected dollar amount. Um, yeah, or something like that. All right, in order to make this work, we're going to have to do a little refactoring. So I need to, how are we doing on tasks? Do I have a lot of to-dos? No, I don't. I'm doing okay on that. Okay. Um, So in order to make this work, let's make sure we've got all our tests passing at the moment. In order to make this work, I'm going to have to have um, I'm going to have to have this take an application model. means that I'll need a new that should still work yep and then to be consistent with the way swing works, let's go ahead and not have the default on that. Instead, we will need to um, pass it in here. Okay. Oh, it looks like I broke something. That's okay. Okay, let's make sure this still runs because I changed the application class, which is not tested. Okay, so we're all good. Yeah, that's.
that's not implemented yet. All right. Um, so now that we've got application frame taking the application model, we can make We can make that. Um, I could use a mock framework, but I'm not going to. And the reason for that is, is that I really actually don't like mocks. I don't like. I don't like asserting that uh, on the implementation of a class, and that's what mocks require you to do. They get away from testing the externally visible behavior and start poking around on the insides. It is a it is necessary in some cases, but I really like to I really try to avoid it. So if I start doing a lot of mocks, I'll bring in a mock framework. The last one I looked at that I liked was Mokito Mokito, M-O-C-K-I-T-O. Uh, that's a great little mocking framework for Java. But um, it's pretty easy to hand roll your your own mocks if you're not doing a lot of them and that's what I'm just going to do here. So, So this is very similar to the code we wrote back in um, when we were testing the event for uh, for the app, uh, the table model. We're going to do the same basic thing. And then we're not going to call the parent. Now, the advantage of something like Mokito um, is is that it would actually override all the very all the methods, which means that if it turns out that other methods are being called. When you hand roll your own mocks, you can sometimes run into problems with real code being run that you don't want to run, or you have to make an interface for every single class and then implement all those methods with nothing. Uh, it, it gets ugly. So we might need to bring that in, but this looks okay for now. So now I need to be able to make the frame click that uh, that text field. Um, I don't know how to do that. Looks like we might not have time to get to it today. Let me just take a look at Swing is going to pause while it, or Eclipse is going to pause while it finds all the methods on the class. So we're just going to sit here and wait. I'm going to blather, blather, blather <laughs> while we wait. Hello? Okay, there we go. Um, well, that's not helpful. Is there a way to click? Okay. Well, that's all the time we have. I'm going to research this, and when we come back, uh, we're going to finish up this test. Hello, everyone. One final note. I'm going to be on vacation next week for Christmas, so uh, the next video that's going to come out is going to be on Monday the 27th. I hope you all have a great Christmas vacation, and I hope to see you back with me on the 27th. Thanks for watching.